Dear colleagues, good afternoon again. Thank you for some minutes for waiting. My name is Anna Nifodova, and today I will be the host of our event. Uh, I would also love to repeat that we are welcome. We are very glad to welcome you at our webinar, SAP and Azure Solutions, Cybersecurity and Business Continuity. And uh, right now, I would like to share some organizational points, and we will be able to continue. Our webinar will last for one hour and a half and we'll, we'll meet four speakers today. So please welcome Hardy Papinga, a head of strategic partners and solutions extensions at SAP, Denise Serkis, SAP engagement manager at InfoPulse, Viktor Golub, senior uh, security architect at InfoPulse, and Vadim Popov, expert IT engineer at InfoPulse. Please note that all you, all the participants are in mute mode. We welcome you to ask different questions. Please use the chat. Our speakers will be happy to answer all the questions during the logical breaks or at the end of their speeches or in the end of the webinar. Uh, please note that the webinar is being recorded and we will definitely share as the recording and the presentation materials uh, that will show our speakers. If you have any additional questions after the event, please write to us and we will definitely redirect those questions to our speakers or to our experts. So please welcome our first speaker, Hardy. Hey, good afternoon, Hi, Anna. Thank you very much. And um, again, good afternoon to everyone to this webinar. Thank you also for having me today. We will be able to present to all of you um, about the partnership between uh, SAP and Microsoft. I'm very pleased and happy to be here. All right, so let me uh, share a few slides with you. I will do that now. Presentation mode. All right, so you've uh, heard my name already. Hardy Poppinger, I'm with uh, SAP uh, since 2007, actually, so quite some time already in working as a vice president uh, for strategic partners, as Anna has said, uh, in this region. And as such, um, working very closely together also with Microsoft, uh, as Microsoft is one of our strategic partners and other partners. And um, InfoPulse is one of our uh, service partners uh, working together with Microsoft and us in this partnership. All right, so then let's go. Um, let's have a quick look at the agenda. This is what I want to discuss with you today and give you some insights on these topics. Um, we will look at uh, the market and uh, why we have this, um, this partnership and what customers are actually telling us is they are the ones who actually were um, telling us that they were having quite some difficulties with their transformation, the digital transformation, and then hence we thought it would make sense to come together as partners um, to help our customers with that. We uh, have a look at the partnership itself and uh, innovations that are coming out of it, because there are continuously coming innovations when uh, two companies like Microsoft and SAP are coming together, and these innovations we, of course, are giving to our customers because that's why we do them. Um, then we will look at the uh, engagement model and some deliverables uh, for the customers. So if you as a customer decide that you want to go with SAP on Azure, then this is what you get out of this, this partnership, so to say, and this is what we're looking at as well. Um, we will also look at some roles that we are asking our customers to provide us with or you know some investments that the customer has to do um, not in terms of uh, hiring new people but rather to give us access to certain people within the organization to be able to really help the customer with the digital transformation and last but not least we will look at some customer examples uh, really just some names so that you can see who already is working with us as partners. All right, so then let's start with uh, the first um, slide here, the first topic, which is the market momentum. And uh, we as SAP and 
and Microsoft, we have spoken with, uh, with analysts and with customers to better understand the strategic plans that our customers have when it comes to moving uh, to the cloud, into the cloud, moving to SAP as for HANA as our new ERP system. And we wanted to really understand what is it that they're doing there and what uh, kind of challenges do they have. And on this slide, you see some statistics that are talking about that. And what you can see on the left side of the slide here um, is that uh, enterprises are accelerating um, their journey into the cloud or towards the cloud. And actually, 80% of, of the enterprises, uh, that's a prediction by analysts like Gartner uh, and others, um, so 80% of the enterprises will um, probably not longer use their traditional data centers by 2025 but will move to public cloud providers or hyperscalers as, as we call them like microsoft is one of them so 80 percent of those uh, will do this move by 2025 and what we see already today is that 68 percent of services cloud services today are already delivered by those hyperscalers or public cloud providers like microsoft so there's a increasing speed when it comes to customers moving towards the cloud and uh, that's um, something that we have to keep in mind. Uh, on the right hand side when we look at our SAP customer base then we can see that the same happens there. So first of all um, we're happy very happy to see that 73% uh, of our SAP customers worldwide are planning to deploy SAP s and a lot of them have already. Um, and 54% say that they will make the switch within the next three years. So there's a huge adoption of S, S4, SAP, S4 HANA in the cloud. And 72% are going to deploy SAP, S4 HANA to the cloud. So that does mean that we see that the market momentum is there and that we have to support our customers with their move. So now we see that the customers want to go into the cloud we see that the customers want to move towards sap as for hana on azure but still we see that there are some delays in this and the delays is what we were interested in and we that's why we looked into it this is why we asked our customers why is that and and here are some answers that we got from the customers and actually that's the base why this partnership between sap and microsoft soft was then formed and the customers were saying that, you know, yes, we want to do the digital transformation. Yes, we want to become more intelligent as an enterprise, you know, working from the data that we have, being able to analyze data, et cetera. But we don't know how to do it. And if we ask, then we get different answers from the hyperscalers like Microsoft or the system integrators like the service partners or Microsoft, uh, sorry, SAP, right? So when we ask those, everybody comes with a different way how to do it. And that was very complex for our customers. And they said, you know, we, we don't know what to do. And with all these different point of views, what is the right way to go now? And uh, then they started to create their own ideas on how to do it. Um, but that was also not uh, making the whole situation better and faster. And, and hence we said, okay, this, this has to stop. We as, as uh, IT companies, software companies, we have to help our customers with it to um, do this transformation, this digital transformation faster and better and get one clear answer and clarity about how this has to be done. And uh, you know, come with a set of recommendations that are also industry baked and based. So really clear um, guidance on how that can be done. So that's the reason why um, we came together as, um, as in a strategic partnership, so to say, as SAP, Microsoft, and service partners like Infopulse to do exactly that. Simplify this whole scenario for the customer so that they really better understand, okay, this is what it's about. This is the status where we are today in our industry. Here is the the to be state so to say that we need to define together the vision where we want to be and have to be in this industry in order to be an intelligent enterprise a digital enterprise 
and then also to talk about the way how to get from the status to the to be state um, to accelerate this whole you know process and project and on the other hand giving our customers then the opportunity to profit from the innovations coming out of this strategic alliance as well not only while we're going through this process of a digital transformation with them because that process will never stop it will be a long-lasting relationship with the customer where we will be there all the time and we will make sure that the customers are you know benefiting from the from all those innovations or from those innovations that coming out of the partnership so now that we have formed this partnership you know we are already in uh you know microsoft and sap we're partners for you know long 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 years uh many years and uh, you know in 2021 when we look at this partnership today and specifically around what i just dis discussed with you here uh, we're looking at these pillars that uh, you can profit from as a customer so first of all in 2021 um, what we have done as one of the innovations is to in start to integrating uh, Microsoft Teams. But now with the pandemic out there since more than a year, meanwhile, everybody is used to, to work with Microsoft Teams and other competitive products um, in an online kind of way. And we started to integrate uh, Microsoft Teams in various ways into SAP um, applications. So that's one thing that we've done. Um, another area is around, we, we call that market approved journeys. So these are really blueprints, so to say, industry specific guidances for our customers so that they can see what we think is the best to do in order to do the digital transformation in their industry. What are other competitors in this industry doing or have done already so that we can learn from that? It's a guidance. It's not to, say, to be said that this is the way it has to be and it has to go, but it's always good to get some guidance there from the experts so that you know, okay, that, that looks good, that sounds good, maybe we should go that way, uh, or we need some deviations here and there. So market-approved journeys, that's how we call them. Then, of course, we looked also at the architecture and, and we said, well, we don't want to only start to integrate or develop joint architecture uh, at the point when the customer says that uh, he she needs it. We need to do it right now and come already prepared. And this is what we've done. So we, we have started years back to uh, develop a joint architecture uh, for our customers that the customer can benefit from uh, and uh, integrated those technologies that are important for the digital transformation. We also are offering um, optimized platform. This is the SAP business technology platform. And with this platform, uh, customers or the service partner um, can uh, integrate additional applications, can expand applications, they can integrate third-party applications, um, do the analytics on the data, um, and um, it's also providing security. So, there is a lot that this platform can be used for, but as I said, this is part of the uh, of the partnership and this is what the customer will benefit from as well. And last but not least, we'll look at the services as well uh, or the engagement model. So here, it, this is really how we as partners, uh, Microsoft, SAP and InfoPulse in this case, for example, how do we come together and what do we deliver as services to the customer so that the customer knows with who um, they have to work and how they integrate as partners and then come up with migration plans with a clear strategy around how to do it um, and uh, clear business outcomes that we will together define with you as a customer from where we start. So I said that this partnership between Microsoft is, is evolving all the time, right, over the past years and it will in the future. and. Uh, here are two areas where we have uh, created innovation. I just spoke about the uh, Teams integration uh, that's on the left-hand side here, where we increase collaboration within the company, but also um, amongst employees, uh, amongst uh, lines of businesses, but also with external, uh, like with 
customers or you know purchases um, that you can then uh, collaborate and communicate with. So we'll look at that uh, on the next slide in a little bit more depth. On the right hand side here, you see that we continuously invest into this partnership, into the technology, and make it even more secure and resilient uh, in order to uh, uh, for the customer to profit from that as well. So constantly modernizations are happening around the clouds, around the applications, uh, and that's that's what's happening uh, and will happen all the time. When we look at Teams and the integration of Teams here, then um, at this point, we'll look at three areas where we have uh, started. Um, the first area is uh, with SAP success factors. This is everything uh, that we provide as SAP around HR. So here we have started to integrate Teams, uh, and I think it's a very logic thing to do. To you want to make sure that your employees have a chance to communicate with each other. So make the whole processes inside your company faster, more profitable. Give your employees a chance to share ideas uh, or come together uh, to chat about whatever you know that is related to the business. So that's one area. The other area is the integration into S4HANA. And at that point, we have a chat box where purchasers can communicate with your company right away while they're in the, uh, on the way to do the purchase. And if they have questions, they can do that right there. So that's one other area. And the third area is around SAP Sales Cloud. Uh, and here, we, with the integration of Teams, we, for example, give your account executives to communicate with their customers straight away. Uh, so without having the need to leave the applications that are, that they are in, like SAP Sales Cloud. So these are the first integrations uh, of Teams, and there has been a huge announcement also at the beginning of this year um, around this integration uh, between the two companies. Okay, so this is now how we engage with the customer. And when we talk about the engagement, we really talk about how can the customer move towards the cloud on the one hand side, but then at the same time, leveraging SAP S4 HANA in the cloud, either public cloud or private cloud. Um, there's a huge new program out there called RISE that we have launched at the beginning of this year. Um, that I encourage you to look at as well, where we closely work together with, with Microsoft as well. And this is what we do. So we come together at the first, you can see this, this, whole, um, this whole path here that we go through with you as a customer. So we align up front. This is the first step. Uh, we come together with you as the three partners, SAP, Microsoft, and the GSSPs, actually, we, we call them Global Strategic Service Partners, or you know, the service partners like Infopods. And we sit down with you to assess where you are as a customer, you know, to have a status quo. And then we discover, okay, what needs to be done. And we'll have frequent checkpoints to see, is that really what we see together and we align on that. And then we design you know, the migration and the solutions. You know, what, what is it that you need? And again, checkpoints along the way. And at the end, we will have a readout of you know, what really needs to be done and has been done so that you are clear about that you get what you wanted to get. And that's really based on, um, on business drivers, you know, on business outcomes. And this is uh, the first that you see here on the slide, now, the strategy and the business drivers. We look at that and we say, okay, business is about business and not about technology. Technology is an enabler. And we as partners, we want to enable you to be better with your business and to become an intelligent enterprise. So the strategy is key and we need to be clear with you what are your business drivers so that we know what we have to do there. Then we look at the architecture, the technical part, at the infrastructure that needs to be put in place in order to support that. And we create the migration plan and we do the migration with you. We put managed services in, for example. And at the end, you will get a whole business case that describes the value that you will get out of this and that you will receive then in the future when you go through this journey together with us.
All right. So I also said that we're asking customers for their involvement, of course, because this is a joint journey that we have to go through together. Otherwise, it won't work. And we need some key roles from the customer side to be with us here. Uh, one, of course, is the executive sponsor. You know, that uh, Sometimes it's the CEO or the CFO uh, together with the CIO, but really people who are instrumental to the enterprise, to the organization, who understand what's going on in the organization and can sit down, therefore, with us to assess the goals and objectives, to ensure that the right stakeholders are on board, and then at the end um, have also uh, the final readout with us to see if what we have done is really what we said we wanted to do. We also need business sponsors or assessment coordinators um, who are with us through this whole um, journey and uh, who are there to coordinate schedules, for example, or make sure that the right people are available when we need them. So these kind of people. And last but not least, what we also need in terms of roles is, of course, the experts. Um, experts from IT or from the business functions, from the lines of businesses like PMOs or functional leads, uh, subject matter experts that are instrumental because they are the ones who understand best the processes, the business processes and other processes in the company that we look at when we want to do the digital transformation there. So these are the kind of roles where we say, okay, dear customer, if we go through this together with you, then we need the involvement of these people. Good. So last slide here really uh, for today, and then I'm handing it over to, to the next speaker, is to give you an overview uh, of some brands who um, have already gone through this journey with us. Um, so you can see there's a lot of very well-known brands already, and uh, that's what companies like us usually do. They put the very well-known names on the slides, but some of them are also um, uh, companies that you might not have heard of. But the, the purpose of the slide really is to show you that, um, and that's where the circle then closes to what I said at the beginning, there is a huge market momentum. Customers want to go into the cloud. They want to move towards SAP as for HANA uh, in the cloud. And um, we need to make sure that we help them on this journey. And um, with this, I'm handing over to the next speaker. Uh, and I'm wishing you a nice day. So let me know if you have questions, we will collect them and uh, we can answer them then later. Thank you very much. Dear Hardy, thank you very much for your presentation. We have just one question. Maybe you can help us shortly and we will continue. Can you please provide us use cases of uh, SAP Swahana integration with Microsoft Teams? These were the ones that um, I have just shown, those three areas where we have started to integrate. Huh? This is the HR area with SAP success factors, then um, with SAP S4HANA itself, the ERP, the core, and with the application of SAP Sales Cloud. And um, this is all about collaboration, making sure that within your company, because success factors is an internal application uh, for employees, and uh, that, that there is collaboration and, and communication going. And then, of course, also with external, with like SAP Sales Cloud, where account executives can uh, chat and communicate directly with customers. Uh, um, without having to leave the application of SAP Sales Cloud, for example. Thank you very much. Uh, right now, we don't have some extra questions, so thank you for the speech, and I'm passing the word to our second sp speaker, Dennis. Okay. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon to all the attendees of this event. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Anna, and thank you, uh, Hardy, for your presentation. Uh, so let me share the slides of my speech. So at the moment, you should see the agenda on the screen. Uh, we are going to talk about the global trends in the migration of uh, enterprises to the cloud. Then we will move to the benefits of SAP migration on Azure. Uh, then 
go to the values and success stories that we have at the moment. Of course, few success stories. Well, uh, we brainstormed together with the colleagues from marketing and we tried to gather and to depict the following uh, uh, the following uh, factors that cause uh, the trend today of moving to the, to, to the cloud. First of all, that we he see here in Ukraine is the um, last mile of internet that became more and more efficient and more and more uh, uh, closer to the end clients and users and enterprises and small and medium companies. We, uh, we see that uh, the coverage of 5G is rising. Uh, we see that uh, the mobile access to the, to the internet connection or, or to the applica business applications uh, is rising. At the moment, uh, uh, agencies count more than three and a half billion smartphones. And of course, we see that such providers like Starlink and OneWeb uh, continue to grow their chains and continue to launch satellites to bring the internet to the most distant places. And that's what the one uh, factor that causes the trend. Uh, then, of course, we are talking about the pand pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, what we see here is that people uh, have to stay at home. Uh, home office is uh, widely spread through the enterprises and small and medium companies as well. We see that uh, users are more and more familiar with uh, mobile medical applications and uh, medical apps in the cloud. For example, here in Ukraine, we can only uh, consult with uh, these uh, uh, doctors uh, that provided by the government facilities. We can only consult via the help of uh, applications HealthMe it is in in the cloud so here we, we see the trend uh, then uh, pandemic of course caused the necessity to decrease costs uh, of the enterprises and we will talk about this more precisely a bit later uh, another trend that we see is the internet of things that is rising tremendously you you should see figures on your screens uh, one most uh, of import most important figures are linked to the retailers who um, more and more utilize uh, devices and uh, utilizes the Internet of Things, and uh, as well as the cities. Uh, here we have 66 uh, percent of USA cities that invest in I I IoT, but uh, uh, of course uh, this trend no not only counts USA but uh, the Eastern Europe market maybe with a bit less figures. Uh, of course vendors, uh, huge vendors like Microsoft and SAP, they, they uh, how to say, they play together with this trend and they cover the trend with their own offers uh, like uh, for example Microsoft uh, is ready to invest and we have we see these cases and a bit later we will talk about this uh, Microsoft is ready to invest in Azure pilot projects for example uh, helping client to uh, to utilize uh, the backup uh, instances of uh, systems with the investments of Microsoft and of course, SAP supports this trend with uh, its new initiative called uh, Rise with SAP. Uh, now the SKU are available in SAP price list. Uh, and uh, I suppose that uh, on this year we will have a separate webinar or at least several marketing initiatives linked to this uh, Rise with SAP program. And the final uh, topic for the vendors uh, supporting the trend is that uh, globally it's more than 30 Microsoft partners uh, re received advanced specialization in uh, SAP on Azure and uh, in Ukraine, Infopulse is uh, the unique company who is ready to, to offer this uh, specialization to its clients. Uh, then we have some charts showing the trend. Uh, these charts are taken from the Flexera and IDC and they are a bit differ, uh, different because of the methodology, how the company gathered the figures, but the trend is very, very clear. 
So uh, on the chart of Flexera, we see the uh, huge decrease of the traditional data centers uh, through the years, uh, in the past and in the, in the forecasted years. Uh, in the chart of uh, IDC on next slide, we see the same trend, but uh, <laughs> from the opposite direction. Uh, we see that uh, the worldwide infrastructure is decreasing for traditional uh, traditional data centers and traditional IT uh, IT landscape or infra infrastructure, and, and uh, their uh, part of the cloud is increasing. Uh, then we have a chart from uh, SAP AG uh, coming from the uh, sub Rise with SAP uh, program. It uh, tells us that for uh, middle business companies with the employees uh, uh, for up to 1,000, it's high more um, uh, high more essential or high more important to go to the cloud and uh, the CIOs uh, from these uh, uh, middle-sized companies are even more engaged into this cloud trend uh, than uh, small and uh, small companies. For example, we, we see the um, uh, 20, almost 29 percentages of the respondents responded to the importance of the cloud. Uh, then we have a figure that is similar to one we saw on uh, Hardy's presentation that uh, 80 percentages of companies uh, at the moment uh, with the employees uh, over 1000 utilize several clouds. So at the moment, because of the trends that we mentioned earlier, uh, employees of these companies are already suited with their uh, with their uh, pla platforms. Uh, that are already in public cloud. Um, the same figure Hardy already told that it's it's taken from the Gartner SAP uh, supports this uh, statement that uh, in 2025, uh, 80% of enterprises uh, are uh, will will face the necessity to switch off of their traditional data centers. And on the previous years, this figure was something around 10 percent. Uh, next figure is from IDC Market Research. It's, it tells us that uh, the whole uh, increase of costs for the cloud platforms during three years uh, passed, uh, passed uh, the 73 percentages and the whole market of the public cloud is up to uh, 277 billion billion dollars uh, then we tried to answer the question what would be left on premise or, or on earth and according to sap uh, figures figures from sap at uh, 2017 enterprises tended to left only uh, uh, business critical applications on on uh, on earth and uh, what we see now with the colleagues uh, uh, while talking with the customers uh, in cis at least that uh, in this year or in next year only legal restrictions can force uh, companies or enterprises to to live on earth erp applications or uh, data ERP data especially it's uh, um, it's linked to the uh, human resources data and for for some countries in CIS it's uh, legally required to to save on earth the human resources data and everything else companies tend to to move to the cloud uh next topic uh, of my speech is the benefits of sap migra migration to uh, to to azure first of all uh, while talking about these uh, reasons why companies need to go to azure uh, we are talking about the challenges that uh, it departments face during the supporting sap uh, locally 
Uh, first of all, uh, the challenge is linked to uh, IT infrastructure and uh, uh, SAP states that it requires from three, three to five years of com commitment to, uh, to have the SAP infrastructure uh, on, on, on premise. And then uh, re regarding the reliability and backup challenges, uh, of course, it's uh, very costly for Mm, for the enterprises to support uh, standby servers that need it only for, uh, for example, recovery and backup in uh, critical business application. Uh, productivity and scalability comes, uh, comes next. At the moment, uh, SAP Azure uh, provides uh, the highest uh, pro pro uh, productivity and it is uh, uh, it is confirmed with our uh, projects and we come a bit later about this. Uh, lack of SAP experts and SAP experts availability comes next and uh, at the mo uh, moment uh, this uh, new initiative of RISE with SAP uh, provides uh, to the client uh, the, um, the availability, availability of SAP basis experts as well. So while going to the uh, SAP on Azure with uh, Azure as a hyperscaler you receive uh, this uh, addition or this lack of uh, SAP experts as well. Uh, higher TCO uh, of the local IT infrastructure, uh, of course, uh, all, all the IT departments can can easily compare uh, the uh, TCO of uh, owning their own uh, servers. Uh, and compare it to the uh, something that uh, Azure can, can provide. And SAP uh, roadmap, s hana roadmap, is something that Hardy uh, to told, already told about with enough details. So at the moment, uh, we are talking that Azure is one of the platform that uh, fully supports uh, this uh, this roadmap and uh, thus for all the clients that are scheduled for retirement of SAP, SAP ECC platform. So Azure is uh, is the best platform that already supports uh, the uh, this roadmap uh, from SAP. Uh, then uh, talking about uh, the benefits of uh, utilizing uh, Azure for SAP. Microsoft provided figures uh, after interviewing uh, IT decision makers and uh, if looking through these figures uh, they read the only one uh, outcome came that uh, if you want to to go calm and, and to gain benefits so please welcome uh, to the Azure at the cloud uh, cloud platform for your SAP application that is uh, something that is confirmed with the interviewing of uh, those companies who already passed this way. Uh, next slide is about the Azure values for business uh, and IT. Uh, here we have two slides uh, split for the group of five uh, major benefits that our uh, clients gain. Uh, the main the main topic from the this first slide uh, is linked to the uh, trust trust and compliance very interesting figures uh, provides sap uh, not sap sorry but microsoft uh, about the azure infrastructure uh, that uh, more than three and a half uh, thousand specialists are working at the moment uh, for the security uh, for the securities or digital security of uh, of Azure. Um, Azure also um, covers more than uh, 55, uh, 65 regions, and um, the whole uh, number of uh, fiber optics uh, linked to the all data centers that are in a Azure uh, by Microsoft is is over. 
265,000 kilometers of fiber optics that uh, unites these uh, data centers. Uh, so you you will be able to get more uh, details after having these presentations from from us. And uh, next, uh, what we would like to share with you is the data uh, from SAP, once again, from the covering over 300 uh, companies who already utilized the uh, going to the cloud. Uh, it tells us that in average, uh, these companies faced uh, minus 33 percentages of uh, TCO for, for seven years, com comparing to their own uh, premise uh, ERP, uh, ERP solution. Then I placed uh, several success stories uh, linked to the, to the success of uh, moving to the cloud. First is uh, Wrangler's Boots Islands. Uh, they are retail from, uh, from USA. One of the key outcomes from this success story is that it only took 20 hours for this huge retail chain uh, to relocate to, to, the, to relocate uh, its SAP applications to the cloud. So it, it's uh, it, it's all about the preparation. If you have the reliable partner uh, who already have passed this way several times with uh, another clients, uh, please be sure that uh, the time of uh, availability will be the, of the system will be maximum and the, oh, will it only will take hours for you to to move to the client your existing sap application uh, um, the next uh, success story uh, tells about the success of mosaic and uh, most crucial uh, scene about them is that uh, previously uh, what they what they noticed about after the migration that that, that is previously it took them weeks uh, to uh, to extend the existing uh, uh, landscape, for example, while adding servers for for new facilities uh, to uh, SAP servers for new facilities, and after the migration it only took uh, took them uh, hours uh, to extend uh, the uh, co uh, necessary uh, compute uh, or computing power for SAP applications. Uh, the last one a success story is ours. It's the success of InfoPulse and it's a bit uh, personal to me because for that time I was participating in the same tender with the offer from another uh, another hosting provider uh, the, uh, from Europe that uh, uh, whose facilities are specially dedicated to SAP. Uh, and uh, the client, Darnitz, are one of the leader of pharmaceutical manufacturing in, in Ukraine. They did, decided to go into, into Azure, uh, but not into this separate uh, uh, dedicated SAP uh, hosting uh, from Europe providers. And after solving this, uh, after accomplishing this project, uh, the uh, key figures that uh, Darnitsa is ready to, to share with uh, other clients, uh, the huge increasing of performance for up to 30 percentages and uh, the uh, decreasing of uh, TCO for 50 percentages. So uh, they are very satisfied with, with the results of the projects and we are ready to share more details if you will uh, request us. So that's it for my uh, speech for today. Hope some figures were useful for you and in you gain some interesting facts. Thank you for your attention. Please ask your questions. Didi, thank you very much for your speech. Uh, right now I don't see uh, any questions, uh, so please colleagues, welcome to uh, put the questions into the chart and our speakers will answer them. So I propose to give the word to our next speaker, Victor. Uh, good afternoon everyone, let me share my screen.
We see it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Anna. So um, let me introduce myself. My name is Victor, Victor Golub. I am a senior cybersecurity architect working for InfoPulse. Uh, before joining InfoPulse two and a half years ago, I was working for Microsoft for like seven years or so. So I know um, Microsoft security story inside out and um, works as uh, architect working as architect uh, at infopulse i uh, use my using my uh, you know experience gained in microsoft on everyday basis so um let's jump to the um straight to the point um because we have a lot to discuss today especially on security a topic. So on our agenda today is uh, reasons to move to uh, Azure Cloud uh, with, this, with SAP setup. One of such reasons is a security, right? Okay, so um, let's go straight to the point. So Azure as a platform for SAP deployment helps uh, helps you gain unmatched security. The thing is that Microsoft invests more than one billion dollar per year and employs more than like three thousand five hundred security experts to protect your information you uh, you know you are placing on in cloud. Um, yeah, and um, you know. In addition, in addition to infrastructure security, Microsoft uh, identifies identity uh, is like at the core of security. So with Azure's Active Directory, you can, for example, federate uh, to your on-premise Active Directory and offer like seamless single sign-on for all of your applications, whether they are on-premise, on Azure, or as a SaaS application. So Azure AD has connectors to like several hundred applications, ensuring that your users can seamlessly log on to all their enterprise uh, applications without having to manage multiple, you know, passwords and hence boosting productivity and security, right? Okay, so uh, identity is the first point. The next points I want to highlight to stress your attention at is um, it's a different security controls across different layers. So on on identity and access management tools, uh, they are enable you to make uh, to take an identity based approach uh, to security and establish truly conditional access policies. So if we will talk about application in Data security, uh, so those controls help you to protect your applications and your data as it moves around both inside and outside your organization. And next comes network security. So you are able to establish secure connections to and within Azure using virtual networks, using network security groups, VPNs and express route. Uh, to protect and secure availability of your apps, uh, to protect against network layer threats with services like Web Application Firewall, Azure Firewall, and Azure DDoS protection. Um, the next one is threat protection. And threat protection allows you to secure your entire organization from threats with Azure Sentinel. Azure Sentinel is a cloud native SIM systems system that scales to your needs and can be accessed from basically anywhere. Um, the last but not least is a security management. Um, the thing is, it is important to assess security state continuously, uh, especially as cloud workloads change dynamically. You know that in um, you know, in IT and in security world, uh, everything is changing very dramatically fast, right? So Azure Security Center will help you monitor security state of Azure resources and hybrid workloads. It will also provide a dynamic security scorecard and recommendations to improve your security in a centralized uh, console, uh, making security management easier across different resources. 
and you will also get advan uh, advanced threats protection across many services like uh, virtual machines, servers, applications, uh, like Azure SQL, like storage, like containers on VMs. Uh, so back to Microsoft Intelligent Graph, you are able to detect and respond to threats quickly across these services. Plus, manage data across your enterprise with Azure Sentinel. And uh, finally, take advantage of extended security updates and integrate with uh, Microsoft many partner solutions. Uh, these are the solutions that you can uh, use to get further enhanced protection for your Azure and hybrid. And let's speak about Azure security capabilities in more details. So you have like a uh, few domains here. Uh, they are network security, they are identity and access management, data and information protection, threat protection and security management. And you can see that Azure has a lot of uh, tools and a lot of services to help you secure each of uh, the mentioned domains. Um, that's very important because uh, you can, you know, you can utilize Microsoft services and uh, security features available that is that are built into Azure Cloud to protect your SAP workloads, to protect your SaaS applications, and um, you can be sure that uh, those solutions are tested well and you know um, doing what they are supposed to do. And if we are talking about security, it worth to mention that Microsoft has a great security um, portfolio. At your screen, you can see the cybersecurity reference architecture updated on September 2020. And it includes a lot of services that, um, you know, that can cover almost each and every security threat vector. And with those solutions, you can ensure that you will have like comprehensive security for your uh, cloud workloads, especially for such important workloads as SAP. Uh, I would also like to highlight that uh, compliance and trust is not uh, something that is Microsoft is really don't care. Uh, uh, Microsoft cares a lot. And Microsoft has the largest compliance portfolio of any cloud platform with like uh, 90 plus international and industry specific certifications. Um, so you can make sure that whenever compliance standard you are forced uh, to uh, be compliance with, uh, I mean, Microsoft uh, Azure is certified with those uh, standards. Um, let's now let's talk about uh, shared responsibility uh, model. You know, with the cloud, uh, some of responsibilities to, uh, uh, regarding protection your infrastructure is uh, is on customer or is on you, like a, a customer, right? And some of the uh, responsibilities is with service provider. Um, so as you can see between the customer and Microsoft, there is a shared responsibility model. And this is depend on the deployment stack. So it could be uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, uh, software or solution as a service. For a typical SAP network based as for uh, HANA solution on Azure, it will be infrastructure as a service, right? Um, and um, yeah, so, Microsoft uh, Azure will take care of security ranging from the physical data center uh, network, uh, as well as hosts and up to hypervisor layer. The rest are on your site as a customer. Um, so also there, there, there is such a document like a security recommendations, uh, a practical guide for securing SAP solutions which is a good framework uh, for our discussion here. And, uh, you know, there are a lot to cover from a security perspective. So I will only expand on, uh, on expand further on the specific topics. Uh, 
uh, some of them are highlighted here in on in red uh, so let's see how uh, how to secure first of all network so uh, from a network perspective let's have a look at the standard uh, SAP on Azure reference architecture so this depicts how to administer an Azure virtual network topology um, also isolation uh, restriction of network services and protocols through a concept of Azure network security groups and uh, this network security would need to comply with security policy requirements that your that your organization uh, dictates uh, through a hub and spoke network topology uh, the SAP application and database servers are all isolated from either internet or even to the on-premise network. Instead, instead, all traffic to and from on-premise has to traverse through the hub, which uh, we need peered to the spoke. And this guarantees the network isolation from the SAP solution on Azure from the public internet. And uh, you can also use more advanced network security measures for example, network uh, DMZ. Uh, yeah, and you can also use some network virtual appliances like uh, F5, which are available uh, in Azure Marketplace. So uh, network virtual appliances are layer seven devices, which comes with uh, web application firewall and other capabilities. Um, yeah, for the first scenario here, it could be that you need to connect back to your corporate network private only. And that is a sample diagram below on your screen. And a uh, second scenario could be you might require a direct access to the internet and private DMZ to your corporate network at the same time. So yeah, so th those are the architecture design, network architecture design for those scenarios. And um, uh, let's also, you know, talk a minute about authentication and the single sign-on. So Microsoft views as a key aspect of cloud security is like an identity and access. You probably are aware about that very well nowadays and uh, with that users can access your organization's resources from anywhere using various devices and applications so conditional access is a course turn capability for azure active directory uh, uh, platform as a service uh, so it connects to thousands of cloud applications including the specific connectors and these include SAP solutions like uh, SAP Network in Azure, Net NetWeaver, sorry, in Azure, SAP HANA, SAP Cloud Platform, uh, and others. And through these connectors, authentication and single sign-on are seamless and result lower integration effort for your organization, while ensuring only authorized users are let into your SAP solutions. Um, yeah, so for the ap application security, right? In the past, uh, SAP graphical user inter SAP, sorry, uh, graphical user interface was a predominant uh, front-end solution for SAP on client workstation, right? This has evolved to SAP Fury uh, on a browser and increasingly to mobile devices as a preferred platform for user experience. So, and, uh, Actually, that uh, also connects related to Microsoft Ent Enterprise Mobility Plus Security Package, which is cloud-based uh, mobile device management solution uh, that your organization can use to manage your users' uh, build, uh, bring your own device initiative, right? Bring your own devices. Uh, basically, you can use uh, such features as identity and access management, information protections, advanced threat protections, unified endpoint management, and others, including uh, Microsoft Cloud Application Security or CASB broker. And uh, uh, if you are using, for example, SAP Cloud Platform to develop your SAP Fury apps, uh, this 
this is integrated with the Microsoft Enterprise Mobility Plus security capabilities. So you will have additional security layer here, additional, um, you know, sandboxes, additional um, security um, services, which is all about information protection, which is all about sandboxing to restrict access to the SAP data on your mobile devices. Uh, so there are also Azure Marketplace images available for, for SAP deployments. Uh, yeah, um, a common benchmark. Yeah, so um, however, this, um, these images are generic templates and they, they are not hardened or built in with security controls. Yeah, so you can use uh, a common benchmark model and uh, most customers will go for central uh, center of internet security or CIS. Um, you can also, you know, s s find some benchmark best practices guidelines for operating systems. Um, and with all, as with all guidelines, enterprises should or need to balance this in co com compliance with their own internal security policies. And um, you should adopt uh, any security measures uh, appropriately to, you know, to that balance. Uh, but uh, generally, Microsoft Azure rec also recommends the following points. So, to use Azure Storage Service Encryption or SSE, uh, it's recommended for all Azure storage accounts, uh, also for Azure Blobs for backup. Uh, Azure Blobs for backup will be also encrypted in the Azure Storage account. And any data that is written to the storage after enabling the SSE will be encrypted. So Linux uh, infrastructure as a service VM and Windows infrastructure as a service VM, uh, which also has a capability to use Azure Disk encryption. Um, both operating system can use also Azure Key Vault. Uh, that can be used to control and manage the disk encryption keys and secrets in your key vault subscription. It has uh, capabilities in provisioning and managing uh, of SSL and TLS, I mean like secure sockets layer and transport layer security certificates. So the secrets can also be protected by hardware security models like HSM, right? Also for databases, Microsoft recommends using the SAP HANA native encryption technology. Um, yeah, so regarding the compliance, Microsoft's uh, goal is uh, for Azure to be a trusted and secure cloud, right? And Microsoft invests, as we already know, one billion on security research and development every year. So um, AI technology is used to analyze against like 6.5 or so trillion global signals. And this is based on the intelligent security graph technology. It's a very advanced one. You can also connect to Microsoft Graph Security API, read the technical, you know, data there and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, benefit from, from, from the data that is available in uh, security graph. And uh, yeah, Microsoft has also some su su such uh, thing like Red Team. Uh, this enables Microsoft to test breach detection and responds to measure readiness and impacts of real world attacks. Um, I believe, so let me check the, the timeline. So yeah, uh, I believe I'm on time. So I want just to quickly highlight uh, like the few of our cybersecurity uh, services that InfoPulse as a service provider can offer to, uh, to you as a customers. We have a, um, you know, security assessment, penetration testing. We can develop a security reference architecture to your, tailored to your company. To your organization. We are also providing such consulting as the, the DevSecOps on Azure. We are dealing with uh, identity and access management on Microsoft Identity Management and Azure AD Premium. 
So we also have in our portfolio information protection technologies like agent information protection and data leakage prevention. And we are dealing with advanced threat protection. So I believe this is it. If uh, someone has any questions in the chat, uh, I will address them directly. Thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, I will, uh, you know, I will, uh, yeah, will give a floor to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Victor, thank you very much for your speech. I see some questions uh, and uh, as you mentioned, please uh, answer them directly. And there is just one comment regarding will uh, the video recording uh, be shared among the participants of the following event? Yes, sure, we will share the presentations and the video so you will have all the content just in a couple of days. So yeah, thank you thank again. You, Thank you, Anna. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, and passing the word to uh, our speaker, Vadim. Hello, one moment. Yeah, we can hear you, Vadim. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, let me start. Uh, my name is Vadim Popov, and I work as Enterprise Cloud Architect position for InfoPools company. I work with uh, big Microsoft technology stack uh, more than 20 years and currently I uh, have, have participated in uh, big uh, security and infrastructure and integration project for transfer, transformate, trans, sorry, transformation uh, on-premise uh, infrastructure to Azure and building uh, maybe full transformation or hybrid cloud infrastructure technologies. Uh, in my presentation, uh, I plan to talk about data recovery technologies because uh, for a lot of companies, if company use SAP system, uh, this is main system for customers business and we receive uh, we receive many uh, questions uh, for uh, how uh, SAP work in Azure, uh, how improve DR and backup technologies if SAP hosted host, host, hosts on Azure and this is my topics. Uh, first part uh, Azure Availability Overview. Uh, very interesting questions uh, because uh, I uh, said SAP for main customers, this is the main uh, working system. This is ERP system, OHR system. And we must understand how, uh, how way to improve Azure Availability we have. Uh, first, SAP must use only certified virtual machine and specific disks. Uh, Microsoft and SAP recommended to use uh, ultra disk, uh, Azure uh, Mac app file, files, and uh, premium storage disks. Uh, if we uh, use premium storage disk, we receive SLA 999.9 uh, with premium storage. Premium storage, this is Azure SSD premium disk. And if we use premium disk for uh, Azure VM, uh, we protected from a single instance problem. Uh, for example, if uh, uh, hardware when the host our virtual machine don't work uh, on one server thread, our virtual machine uh, successfully uh, quicker uh, moving to another uh, hardware in this thread. Next topic. If we want to protect again its failures within one rex, but in one data center, uh, we have technology Azure availability sets. This technology uh, can uh, uh, locate uh, can locate 
uh, virtual machines for subsystem as a cluster to different different uh, hardware racks. And if all server racks not worked, our uh, our host of our cluster uh, can work in these data centers. And if we use for SAP solution uh, Azure Availability Sets technologies, we receive SLA 99, uh, 95 percent. Uh, next, uh, because uh, SAP is a very important system, uh, maybe we have a questions. Uh, if we want protect from all data center failures, what we are doing? We can use Azure Zona Availability Technology. Uh, what is this? Azure provide in one region, for example, West, West Europe or another region, present different data centers from one, uh, one region and, uh, and uh, present uh, as a availability zone. Uh, if I locate uh, host of clusters to uh, uh, different zones, this is physically hosts uh, to different data centers. And during this uh, technology, we receive 99-99% uh, SLA. This is a good point. And uh, of course, uh, we uh, also must uh, understand uh, if we want to protect uh, for all region failures, uh, we can use cross-region Azure DR technology. DR technology. Uh, later, I present uh, architect architectural scheme for use this technology. And we can, uh, for example, create HANA system replication with, uh, uh, cross with different Azure regions and uh, maybe use Azure site recovery technologies uh, for uh, receive uh, replication copy of virtual machine and other services and other non-database services. And we have different technologies for improve availability and we can use that. But uh, first very important topic uh, because uh, SAP system uh, uh, we plan and use this system to Azure I want to speak about recommended configuration. Uh, very important, we can use uh, only certified Azure VM for SAP. And currently we have uh, different uh, types of virtual machine and uh, especially uh, M series uh, Azure virtual machine and uh, maybe for small SAP system, for a middle SAP system and big, uh, big SAP system, we have, for example, uh, virtual machine uh, from uh, RAM uh, 20 terabytes and uh, we have a big uh, vCPU scouts. Also, if we use SAP very large instance and we must have very uh, big hardware, Azure can provide large instance for SAP HANA. This is a special physical virtual machine, uh, different physical virtual machine, not Azure virtual machine for sub large instances. Also later I present topology for VR if uh, customer planning to use large instances, large instances for SAP HANA. Uh, I speak about a certified virtual machine for uh, SAP, uh, not, not only HANA, uh, because uh, uh, on Azure we can host uh, sub uh, any DB on Azure, and this is one of way if we want migrate to uh, 
SAP AnyDB to Azure and after that migrate to HANA because uh, maybe my colleagues from SAP correct me. Uh, I remember uh, all customers have time deadline for migrate to HANA. SAP recommend, strictly recommended migrate system to HANA because this very productive database and uh, uh, technologies for big uh, new uh, solution from SAP. And uh, we have certified machine stack and for example E-series VMs uh, recommended use for dev and dev test uh, and uh, uh, and non-productive technologies, for example, POC, uh, because this is uh, virtu this virtual machine uh, has uh, um, half terabytes RAM limitation, and of course, maybe uh, if we have small uh, small hardware uh, sub uh, requirement, can be used this machine for production, and if we use big uh, uh, SAP system, Microsoft and SAP presents M series VMs for most different productive SAP implementation. And this VM uh, can present uh, big size RAM and uh, a lot of SAP solution use this VM. And if we uh, want to use very large instances for SAP, I speak about that. We uh, can use uh, different uh, physical server from Azure, has names, SAP, HAN, SAP HANA, large instances. And this is very, uh, uh, for example, uh, 24 terabyte RAM. This is uh, good RAM for old service. Uh, also, because I spoke with recommendation, the first main recommendation use only certified and recommended virtual machine. Uh, today SAP and Microsoft present uh, many uh, interesting recommendation for uh, sizing and of course after use subsizing uh, we uh, can uh, implement this subsizing to uh, choose as necessary as VM and this. And uh, Victor uh, spoke about uh, network security infrastructure and also we have a, a lot of questions for uh, how connect uh, customers uh, internal clients to our SAP. Uh, we have uh, two solutions. Uh, first solutions uh, not um, use only in internal network. Uh, this is uh, internal network uh, connect uh, uh, via express route or uh, maybe web VPN gateway uses reserved uh, internet reserved VPN connection uh, express route this is MPLS tun tunnel to Azure and on-premise infrastructure and uh, in this case uh, SAP hosted uh, ho ho hosted on Azure uh, as a part of internal network. If our clients connect uh, to internal network, these clients can work with SAP. This is internet isolation, isolated system. Uh, and also uh, SAP on Azure provide a second uh, connection scenario. If we don't want to connect our clients to internal uh, corporate network and we, for example, can uh, uh, connect uh, from internet to uh, SAP hosted on Azure. Uh, of course, we must uh, create Azure public domain military zones uh, subnet. We can use uh, network virtual appliance from Azure or, uh, for example, Azure Firewall or uh, uh, another uh, network appliance and uh, can connect to uh, SAP system uh, from uh, net, from this network security appliances or can connect clients via jump host. This is uh, two network scenarios. And uh, 
five important points to start SAP systems on Azure. First, uh, we must use only certified recommended virtual machine for NetWeave or for SAP HANA. Uh, uh, this documentation provided from SAP and Microsoft. Also, uh, before uh, start or, uh, or uh, implement uh, SAP system on Azure, uh, we can uh, use SAP size for uh, choose right Azure virtual machine configuration. Uh, also, we must check uh, Lattice uh, operation system uh, for recommended SAP to use of Azure VM. Today, uh, uh, good point to use uh, Slash Enterprise uh, application for SAP. Uh, also, we can use Slash, also we can use Red Hat uh, operation system for big sub solutions. Uh, and uh, uh, very interesting, this recommended operation system support matrix, we must check before implement uh, our configuration. And uh, after that, very important, uh, how use storage for uh, Azure uh, uh, sub on Azure. Uh, because Microsoft Azure provide uh, a lot of different storage types. Uh, first storage type, archival and cool. This is not, uh, this storage for uh, uh, only achieve uh, data for uh, short term and long term achieve. So it's not for SAP production. Also, uh, standard HD drives not recommended for sub productive. This is maybe possible scenario for test and death, uh, and also standard uh, SSD drives, also sub NetWeaver dev and test. Very important things. Uh, premium SSD, SSD uh, disks provide additional SLA, and uh, for HANA, this is must have. So is, for example, uh, premium SSD drive uh, recommended use for sub HANA productive, sub HANA uh, test and dev, and uh, sub NetWeaver solution. For uh, very difficult scenarios, uh, scenarios uh, we can use ultra disk. Ultra disk, this is uh, disk uh, for uh, good quality and uh, good uh, throw spot for uh, uh, big databases. And also for uh, build sub solution file share or uh, creating uh, sub solution for very large uh, databases, uh, Azure provide Azure Net, Net, Net App files for sub HANA. This is also certified solution. For example, Azure Net App files uh, uh, can work for a storage as a sub system uh, low, medium, medium high, and high uh, uh, for HANA and any DB. So this is one of possible scenarios. Ultra managed disks, this is very high throughput drives. And uh, because we can uh, implement setting for uh, small latency and very high IOPS, we can uh, choose necessary IOPS, necessary latency and necessary throughput. And Microsoft uh, 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 implement uh, our uh, parameters. Next, uh, ultra disk uh, for big sub solution is recommended uh, scenarios for data. I go to next topic, going to next topic. Uh, uh, next topic, DR and high availability. Of course, uh, 
we have basic architecture recommendation next schemes for uh, uh, the art uh, strategy. For example, uh, first of recommended solution, use uh, Azure Net app, app files for uh, high availability configuration. Uh, these uh, figures uh, present uh, high uh, availability cluster. Uh, and oh, for example, we have uh, standby node, we have working node. Standby node, uh, this additional node for uh, change uh, if one node or two nodes uh, uh, no, uh, fails. And uh, all of nodes connect to uh, Azure Net, uh, Net app files. This is network storage. Uh, and, uh, and also we can uh, implement uh, Azure system replication for HANA database. And no, more, more detailed scenarios. Uh, we use, for example, for two virtual machines, uh, we build uh, uh, two nodes cluster. Uh, we have uh, front end balancer uh, who uh, balance uh, inputs uh, between uh, two virtual machines, and we connect Azure Net app files, uh, and uh, we have two database copies and these two database copies working uh, with uh, HANA system replication and fully syn synchronized. Uh, this is on this case, this is synchronously scenarios. Next uh, topology, this is also recommended topology. Uh, if we want to use uh, uh, stand, uh, disks, for example, uh, ultra disk or premium SSD disks, uh, we can build uh, DR strategy. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, main, main Azure region, uh, we can use, uh, for example, two virtual machine with HANA database and uh, implement uh, HANA system replication, synchronous replication, and uh, locate uh, this virtual machine uh, to availability set. Uh, in this case, we uh, protect for failing uh, server threads. If we want protect uh, for data center failures, we must use Azure availability zones. To is, uh, on this example, uh, one virtual machine uh, located in, for example, Azure so availability zones one, uh, second on Azure availability zones two, for example. And if uh, all data centers uh, don't uh, don't work, uh, we have a synchronous copy, and our system uh, still uh, will still work uh, without this data center. Uh, for uh, uh, also if we want implement DR and uh, uh, won't protect from all regional uh, failures, we can use a second Azure region, uh, for example, DR region. And uh, for HANA, uh, we can use uh, virtual machine with uh, HANA and implement uh, HANA database replication, HANA system replication, and uh, our uh, changes from uh, main database replicated to DR region. For another SAP system, we can use Azure Site Recovery technology. This is very interesting technology. This technology uh, create uh, replicated copy of virtual machine and and uh, this machine uh, stay stopped state and uh, continuously we receive uh, changes from uh, basic virtual machine and have synchronously virtual machine copies after uh, after 
failure on main region or if we want testing with this system or we want manually uh, doing failover process, we uh, can use uh, Azure, Azure Site Recovery tool and start and start failover. For example, or this failover can start automatically. And this virtual machine uh, started and uh, system still work from uh, parent region. This is basic topology. Also, uh, if we want to create uh, high availability SAP system, uh, uh, HANA DB or uh, any, any DB uh, recommend, uh, rec standard recommendation uh, create, uh, uh, create uh, database based replication for uh, provide availability for data and create uh, uh, availability set and use uh, uh, system cluster for uh, another system. This is, no, for example, DB databases uh, deploy across two virtual machines and central services across minimum two virtual machines. Uh, yes, for uh, enhanced availability, uh, application layer uh, can implement in availability set in one availability zones. Uh, second copy, <laughs> we can use availability zones too. And uh, in this case, we protect from all data center uh, failure. Uh, and uh, central services deploy across two VM uh, or, or can use more virtual machines. This de it depends from uh, the C systems. And uh, uh, also uh, this configuration, uh, we uh, have um, fully protect configuration from uh, data centers failures. Disaster recovery. Uh, in this case, uh, possible solution, I speak about that. Uh, we can use in one region uh, Azure availability zones and use synchronous HANA system replication with after failover. And for second region, we can use asynchronous HANA system replication. And uh, if we don't have access uh, to Azure Region 1, uh, our system can work from Azure Region 2. And uh, typical architecture, uh, I spoke about that, uh, HANA system replication and uh, HANA asynchronous system replication for uh, use uh, in this case. Also, uh, such technology uh, can use uh, for uh, example SAP ERP with any DB on Azure infrastructure because I spoke about uh, Azure support not only uh, HANA, uh, SAP HANA, uh, SAP for HANA on Azure. Next, uh, I spoke, to, I, uh, sorry, I uh, spoke about uh, large instances uh, SAP, uh, this is uh, a different physical uh, machine for SAP, for SAP system. And we also can use, uh, and we also can use uh, SAP uh, DR uh, Azure DR technologies for uh, large, uh, large instances architecture because uh, uh, during large instances of architecture, this physical machine can also use uh, HANA uh, system replication or, for example, uh, snapshot uh, replication with storage. Next topic. This is also important topic, backup. Uh, Azure provide maybe all necessary backup solution for SAP system. 
first of all, we can uh, back up all virtual machines with SAP, uh, Linux or Windows machine, uh, because Azure backup servers provide uh, uh, this functionality. And also Azure backup services uh, can manage backup HANA databases. Uh, because this solution uh, certified with back in backup interface and Azure backup service uh, have seen HANA database uh, with as internal HANA interface and can manage backup from Azure backup services. This is one of uh, additional uh, uh, features if we host uh, sub uh, solution on Azure, uh, because we can manage for uh, backup HANA database uh, with Azure backup service and uh, can sa can uh, save this backup on Azure storages uh, to one region or uh, during region we, we can replicate backup via pair regions, for example. Uh, also for uh, SAP HANA in Azure Backup, uh, we can use uh, uh, special solution Azure Backup for HANA. Also, we can uh, backup uh, disk snapshot uh, and uh, can backup uh, all virtual machines, if you want. And also, if our system uh, uh, must implement another uh, backup solution, uh, in Azure, we can implement uh, uh, some additional scenarios. Uh, first, uh, backup uh, HANA database to NF NF NFS share on Azure Net, Net App files. Uh, second, uh, we can copy backup files to Azure Blob Storage, and also we can use uh, uh, different disk for back, disks for backup and uh, create snapshot this disk, for example, for uh, some schedule. Uh, and we can uh, provide all necessary uh, Azure backup technologies for uh, SAP system. And uh, last uh, topic, uh, if, we, if we use uh, Azure for SAP system, uh, we can use a uh, good solution, Azure monitor for SAP solution. This monitor can uh, ingest uh, logs from SAP system uh, to log Azure Log Analytics and uh, provide a good monitoring solution uh, how our system work. Thank you for attention. Uh, thank you so much for attend. Maybe that's all. Vadim, thank you for your speech very much. Thank you for all attendees who uh, were with us today. So, as I mentioned before, we will share the presentation materials and the video recordings a bit later this week. So, please uh, wait for our email. And, of course, please welcome uh, to our next webinars and next online events. Have a great evening. Goodbye.